What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDG, and BDG is breaking this shit right now. Kenny Galladay signs with the New York Giants. I'm going to be straight up honest with you. I've heard enough reports and rumors and chirping on Twitter to be confident enough that this has happened already. I'm filming this at 6.55 p.m. Eastern time, so it hasn't been official. But apparently the Giants accidentally murdered Kenny Galladay and are looking at ways to cover it up because he has not left the facility yet. He's been there for like 30 fucking hours, 30 hours straight. They haven't got a deal done yet, but apparently they are very, 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 very close. So I'm confident enough that it already happened by the time you watch this. The reason we're doing that, we're going to go live with Snacks once the deal actually happened. But it's Friday night. Snacks is already out, obliterated. Uh, Steve's on his way over here to film Why You Yelling. So by the time the news actually breaks, I'll be in the middle of filming something. So I can't go live. So I figured I would just pretend it already happened and we could fucking break it down. Kenny G to the New York Giants. I'm going to assume he gets something like three, three years, maybe 50 52 million or something like that. Wild guess. I have no idea. I can look like a fucking idiot afterwards. But he's going to sign with the New York Giants. Now, Kenny G has been a weird case, an odd case. We don't really know what to do with him, but I'm going to tell you what to do with him. Both redraft, dynasty. I'm here to help you all out. I'm here to, to break it down for you. We look at Kenny G. Nice career. Came in as an older prospect, but 2018, 2019, bike to bike, 1,000 yard season. Came into 2020 with a hamstring. He was, you know, he was a third round pick. He's getting picked pretty early in Dynasty, despite being a 26-and-a-half-year-old wide receiver prospect who didn't have an elite season under his belt yet, right? A lot of times, you're picking these guys in the third round of startup drafts because either, A, you know, they showed glimpses and they're like 22 years old, or by the time you're 26, 27 years old, you better have a couple elite seasons under your belt. Kenny Galladay had neither of them going for him. So where he was being drafted last year, a little bit uncomfortable for us. However, this time around, I think we've learned our lesson. Kenny G came into 2020 with this hamstring injury. Caused him to miss uh, a couple games to start the year. He ends up getting on the field weeks three through seven. Hurts his hip week eight before halftime. Basically the worst hip injury of all time because he had to miss the remainder of the year. I'm sure it was very real. I'm sure the hip pain that he was going through was uh, serious. And there was no, absolutely no way he could have been on the field to play. So had he stayed on the field for 16 games last year, right? He was on weeks three through seven. Four games. You pace that out to 16 games. We're looking at 112 targets, 80 catches, 1,350 yards, eight touchdowns, 223.2 half PPR fantasy points. Would have been the wide receiver eight if he kept that pace. Again, he didn't though because that hip injury was absolutely devastating. Couldn't even walk, I heard. I heard he had to be in a wheelchair for the last couple months of, of uh, 2020. Signing in New York. I know immediately everyone's going to be like, oh, but Daniel Jones stinks. RIP Kenny Galladay. Here's what we know. Kenny Galladay clearly and immediately becomes the best outside, the best receiving threat past the line of scrimmage, okay, before y'all start yelling about Saquon. Last year, we legitimately had to have the argument of who the alpha was in this receiving group between Sterling Shepard and Darius Slayton and fucking Golden Tate. The answer was none of those fucking dudes. The answer was nobody there. I, the fact that we we need to learn from that lesson. If you don't have alphas, you don't force somebody into being the fucking alpha. And what that does, what getting a, a real alpha into the mix, it, it lets everybody else play their role, right? These other guys, are that's what they are. They're role players, they're not alphas. Darius Slayton, he's a role player. He's a deep guy. He's, he's an exciting, young, athletic, deep guy. You got Sterling Shepard. He's a slot guy. That's what he does. He's a good possession slot receiver, but no one is what Kenny Galladay brings to this offense. Daniel Jones, Obviously gets a monster boost here with a real weapon like Kenny Galladay on the outside. A guy who, when he's under pressure, third downs, right? You don't feel confident throwing downfield Darius Slayton 40 yards down. You don't feel confident, just you don't want to dump it off to Sterling Shepard for six yards on, on third and 12. This is where Kenny Galladay comes into play and will make this offense run so much more smooth. You look at the involvement last year from these guys, from these role players. Slayton had 97 targets. Shepard had 90 targets in 12 games, okay? So you pace that out over over 16 games, that's like 120 targets, basically. So, and it's not, it's not like this offense is super conservative either. If you look back at Daniel Jones and the games that he started in over the last two years, like since he's been the starter in New York, he has averaged nearly 35 pass attempts a game. It's not a huge number, but it's definitely not like Lamar Jackson-esque where you're throwing at 29, 30 times a game, Baker Mayfield-esque, right? Those five, six extra pass attempts a game usually equate to an extra one, two targets a game for your alpha, which is the difference between 90 targets, 105 targets, 120 targets, okay? So this is not a very conservative offense that you might think it is just because Daniel Jones is there under quarterback. So I think, Kenny G, there's no reason you shouldn't flirt with 120 to 130 targets off the rip. 
I'm not going to get super overexcited about his ceiling, right? Like I'm talking about him being an alpha. I think I'm more excited about him from a real life standpoint. I think he's going to have a really solid couple of years where he's a, an 1100 yard receiving guy, seven to eight touchdowns, wherever you draft him in a redraft, I'd imagine he's going to start going probably back of the third round, early fourth round, maybe even a little bit later than that. I think a lot of people are going to be off him just because of the fact that he's playing with Daniel Jones. I think he's going to return. I don't want to say he's going to like return a ton of value on top of that, but I think he's going to return exactly what you're drafting him for. If you're drafting, you know, I talked about this in all the videos so far that I'm dropping my wide receiver threes and fours. I like to shoot for upside. Those early guys, I'm not, I'm not mad about grabbing a Kenny Galladay as my wide receiver one or my wide receiver two, knowing you're getting 1108. Okay. You shoot for upside with running backs. You shoot for ups. You shoot for league winning running backs. You shoot for upside wide receiver threes and fours. And that's what your team pieces together to be a championship team. Kenny G, you know, if you're going to draft him early fourth round, like I'm completely fine with that and redraft. I think that's exactly the value that he returns. For dynasty, things get a little tricky because he's already 27 and a half years old, okay? By the time this contract is up, he'll be over 30. And this is probably like his last meaningful contract that he's getting in the NFL. Of course, he can jump around and do some AJ Green shit where he's going like one year, one year, one year, one year, and uh, not really playing a role. But Kenny G has got a nice like two, three, maybe, maybe if you want to get generous four year window right that or right now, I'm confident that'll be a low end wide receiver one in this window. The question becomes, you know, how much does that move the needle? Like depending on where you have to draft them in dynasty, are we going all out for a two, three year window of low end wide receiver one numbers? Okay. Wide receiver 11 to maybe you'll have a wide receiver eight year, but probably like wide receiver 11 to 15 in that range when all is said and done. I think it's super similar to like Mike Evans. They're both pretty much exactly the same age. They're going to put up very, very similar numbers. We can't predict the touchdowns on a year to year basis, but I think the other statistical outcomes, we could pretty much kind of pinpoint it down. So looking back to the ADP that we grabbed from mock week from big dogs, mock week, we got a sample size of 72 dynasty startup drafts uh, from earlier last month. These, these numbers, this ADP is, is obviously pre NFL draft, but it's also pre free agency. Okay, so those are two things to note. Mike Evans, 72 draft sample size, the 602 wide receiver 18, Kenny Galladay, the 704 wide receiver 24. So I will take Galladay mid seventh round all day in a dynasty startup. That's very good value. Okay, so if, if you're in a super flex, a tight end premium, you could literally go with two running backs. You can get your two quarterbacks. You can get a tight end. You can get a wide receiver before him and then grab Kenny Galladay as your wide receiver two or even could. Well, he could be your wide receiver one and then grab some younger wide receivers after him and he'll he'll produce as a low-end wide receiver one. Regardless, unless you have an elite, 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 elite fantasy wide receiver, those guys bunched in the middle do not move the needle for you winning your leagues anyway. So at that pick, seven, you know, round seven, round eight, whatever, Kenny Galladay, I think, is a, is a really, really, really good pick. Although he is a little bit older, that's obviously why you get the value there. Six round is probably where I start to get a little hesitant. That's where he gets onto the radar, but I'm not jumping up. I'm not moving up picks. I'm not looking fucking spicy and trying to make some moves there on Kenny G in the sixth round. Seventh round, that's where you do it. Good on the big dogs for having that ADP. Absolutely beautiful. Great move for New York. Darius Slayton, Sterling Shepard. Wide receiver four is probably more likely like wide receiver fives. If so, I think Shepard is, is draftable in PPR. Slayton, probably not. Slayton, standard, maybe a guy that you're not going to really want to have in your lineup on, an, on a weekly basis. But Daniel Jones, this makes him interesting, man. This makes him interesting. You got Saquon coming back. You got Kenny Galladay out there now. We'll see what they do in the NFL draft. Daniel Jones could be a sneaky, sneaky quarterback one in 2021. So if I've drafted him in Dynasty, like obviously you're a little bit nervous about what you've seen overall, but these moves can only mean good things for his future. So hopefully this is a step up he needs to get some of that value that you drafted him for. Kenny G, low end wide receiver one in redraft, a little bit later in Dynasty, but oh, I, I, I do not hate this, this, this landing spot as much as most people probably will right off the rip.